Welcome to Module 26 in this series of lectures on statistical process control, statistical process improvement, statistical quality assurance. We've come to the point of discussing Schuert control charts and have made a general introduction to Schuert control charts. In this module and next, we're going to speak specifically about Schuert control charts for measurements or using old time jargon for variables data uh, and consider what pre precisely what methods are available for measurements. Uh, the data that we will use for an example in this module and the next uh, come from an uh, IE361 dimming drama demonstration. Uh, there were 18 samples taken, samples of size 5, and there were ranges and uh, sample means computed for these 18 samples and plotted. Uh, the uh, ranges are plotted above, the means or averages are plotted below, uh, and it's these data that we are going to analyze in this uh, module 26. When we introduced Schuert control charting in modules 24 and 25, uh, we talked some about X-bar charts being the most uh, common and most famous type of Schuert control chart. And to review, uh, we determined that uh, if one is going to plot averages that the mean for an average is a process mean and a standard deviation for an average is a process standard deviation over the square root of the sample size and that leads to these uh, so-called standards given control charts for X bars. Uh, we further saw that if one is not furnished with uh, standard values for mu and sigma, one might uh, estimate uh, an average by averaging X bars and estimate a process standard deviation by taking an average range and dividing by this control, car control chart constant little d2, uh, little d2 uh, depending upon a sample size to wind up with these uh, as past data or retrospective control limits. Uh, in fact, it's traditional to uh, use the symbol cap A2 for 3 over little d2 times square root of n so that another form of these retrospective control limits are these x bar bar plus or minus uh, a2 r bar. We saw in module 25 that if one makes standards given control limits for x bar, the upper control limit is 7.3, the lower control limit is 2.7. And looking back on uh, the control chart on uh, this panel, uh, with x bars plotted, there's 2.7, there's 7.3, and these last three uh, X bars plot uh, above control limits while the other X bars are well within control limits. Uh, there is evidence at uh, sample 16, 17, and 18 uh, that indeed the data are not being drawn from the uh, brown bag or the red bag, uh, but from a different process. Uh, if one takes the 18 sample means and ranges from panel th from that panel and averages, an average X bar uh, turns out to be 5.744. Now in that average there are three X bars coming from uh, those last three samples that we know uh, physically came from a different process than the uh, first 
uh, 15, but uh, we'll go ahead and pretend that we don't know that. Uh, and the average R is 4.278. And so retrospective control limits for X bar are going to be this X double bar. There is R bar. Uh, and this is A2 based on the sample size uh, N equal to 5. Uh, there's an upper control limit of 8.2, a lower control limit of 3.28, and one could take those and apply those retrospectively to the 18 sample means, and we would determine that uh, these last three values are outside of even these retrospective uh, control limits, and so uh, even without standards to use here, having to uh, make provisional estimates, presuming that the process is stable, and applying those to the uh, data in hand, we determine that, in fact, uh, it's implausible to think about that process as being a stable process. Uh, in addition to X bar charts, one can talk about charts for ranges. It's fairly traditional to use an R chart or a chart for ranges in addition to an X bar chart. Uh, it's not necessarily it's not the best thing to do. Uh, it's what traditionally has been done because ranges are easy to compute. Actually using an S chart is a better alternative, especially in these days when computation is cheap and uh, there's no problem computing standard deviations. Uh, but for purposes of uh, discussing what is traditional, uh, let's look at the range chart, and then we'll take up the S chart uh, in the next module. Uh, in order to make control limits for ranges, uh, we need to know some probability facts about ranges based on a sample from a normal distribution. Uh, and it turns out that R has a probability distribution that is not standard, but it's one that, that can be uh, derived. And it's possible to figure out what, the, what an average range is when one is sampling in items from a normal distribution with a, with a mean mu and a standard deviation. Uh, sigma. And in fact, the average range is a multiple of the process standard deviation. And precisely what this control chart constant little d2 is, is that constant of proportionality. Uh, and that's something that can be worked out uh, using calculus or numerical analysis. And that's where the uh, control chart tables, uh, the table of control chart constants come from. Uh, in addition, it's possible to work out what the standard deviation is for the probability distribution of R. And it turns out to be, again, proportional to the process standard deviation. And this time, the constant of proportionality is called something's called little d3. Uh, so what is little d3? It's precisely the ratio of the standard deviation of a range, that is how variable our range is, compared to what is the process standard deviation. If you take these probability facts together, these probability facts about R, and take them together, it then makes sense that one would set an upper control limit for R at D2 times sigma plus 3d3 times sigma, a lower control limit for r at d2 times sigma, minus 3d3 times sigma. Uh, and if one then uh, agrees to call little d2 plus 3 little d3, big D2, call little d2 minus 3 little d3 d1, uh, one is is left with uh, a uh, with control limits standards given control limits for ranges that are of the form uh, big D two times sigma 
big D1 uh, times sigma. In a retrospective context, uh, where 1 is essentially going to uh, estimate process standard deviation, say, by an average range over little d2, if one plugs that estimate into control limits, standards given control limits for R, uh, one has big D2 times R bar over little d2, and big D1 times R bar over little d2, and then making the ratio of big D2 to little d2, giving it a name, uh, one might call it big D4, taking a ratio of big D1 to little d2 and giving it the name big D3, uh, one winds up with retrospective control limits uh, for ranges that are uh, of this form. All of these formulas are uh, collected in, at a in a table at the end of chapter 3 of Bartim and Job's textbook, uh, along with uh, the ones that are going to be covered in the next in the next few modules. Uh, here, this is this is simply uh, the set of logic as to where they come from. Uh, since one, if one knows that the brown bag, the red bag, uh, have a standard deviation of 1.715. Uh, an upper control limit for ranges based on the sample size that was used in the demonstration, namely n of 5, produces an upper control limit for ranges of 8.43. Uh, turns out for small sample sizes, uh, the difference between d little d2 and little and 3 times little d3 turns out to be negative. Uh, so uh, that times uh, uh, a standard deviation would give a negative uh, control limit for sigma, and that doesn't make much sense. And so we'll just say that there is no lower control limit for small sample sizes for ranges. Uh, if one applies that uh, to the uh, ranges on uh, in the data set, uh, you, one would find that uh, by at at sample 16, uh, one would determine that indeed the process standard deviation is no longer this 1.715, uh, something changes between sample 15 and 16, both in terms of process mean and in terms of process standard deviation. If one takes the 18 sample means uh, and averages, that R bar is 4.278. That means that using the, uh, the number big D4 based on a sample size of 5 being 2.115. Uh, big D4 times R bar is 9.05. And if one applies that limit retrospectively to the 18 sample ranges, uh, it's still the case that uh, the 16th sample range plots out of control. Uh, and so one can conclude that there is no single uh, process, a process standard deviation that could plausibly describe all of the data that are on that uh, control chart form. There, ha there is instability in the short-term variation of the process.